with your router. Okay. My name is Yvonne Salas, and uh, among the many hats I wear, I am with uh, Etiqueta Excellence. It's a training center for protocol and business etiquette and social etiquette. And in particular today, we're going to spend the next few minutes talking about how to dress for success. And that has to start going back to those uh, wonderful tips that Marcia was telling us about with being authentic. But being authentic, we also have to be aware that first impressions are very, very important. And uh, whether we think it's right or not, many times irrelevant of how well prepared professionally or academically for a job. We have to look the part. And in order to look the part, we have to give our appearance the importance that it deserves. And many people don't give your personal appearance, your professional, professional image, the importance that it has. And so you will have a professional advantage, you will have an edge, over you peers that don't give it that much importance. Uh, the fact that first impressions are so important is because it's been scientifically proven that people make uh, judgments or have an opinion of you within the first 15, 30 seconds that they see you. So we don't have very much time to make a good first impression. We have even less time to correct a bad first impression. And so the advice that most mentors and specialists in the area will give you, even those that are in HR for many years, and perhaps you all have had that experience, is that we should dress not for where we are right now, but for what we want to achieve. In other words, Think about what you want to be doing in five years' time, in ten years' time. Project yourself into the future. See yourself where you want to be, what you want to be doing, what you want to have achieved, and start dressing the part. Look like you are already powerful. You are already successful. We have to give ourselves that much confidence so that we can project it. We all here are women that are professionals. We have some men in the group, and that applies obviously to them also. We have to be successful within ourselves before we can be successful in the outside world. If we want to have those new clients, if we want to get that position, if we want to get that raise, to get that promotion, our personal image is a very fundamental ingredient to that accomplishment. On top of that, many external forces are out there that we cannot control and that will influence whether or not we get that raise or we get those clients. But there is one thing that we can control. There is one thing that we have absolute and total decision over, and that is how we look every single day. So it's our responsibility to go out there looking the way we want to be perceived. In other words, there is no excuse to rolling out of bed unless you're in the situation what Marcia was talking about. You're totally disappointed with your life right now. The job that you have is not fulfilling to you as a person. And of course that is going to be reflected in how you prepare yourself to go to that job. You are not going to go looking like a successful, powerful, empowered woman. Because you're not. You don't feel it. Therefore you don't project it. So when you start being authentic with yourself and finding out exactly truly what it is that I want to do, what type of job do I really love, 
Where do I want to be in the next five, ten years? What do I want to leave for my children? What's the example that I want to set? How do I want to be perceived by myself, by my family, my immediate family, and by those outside, by those out there, my potential clients, my employer, my boss, the boss that I want to have five years from now. If I were to meet him in the supermarket today, he's going to be shopping just like I am. Maybe he's the person next to me choosing those beautiful red tomatoes. And we establish a conversation. Do I look like the person that he might be needing? Do I look like the person that perhaps he is looking for? Well, it depends on me. And that's why I think that personal image and your, uh, the way that you dress and the way that you take care of yourself, it's our responsibility. And so I leave with you today just a few tips to keep in mind. But the most important thing that I want you to remember is that your personal appearance, your professional image, is one of the very few things that we have absolute control over. It does not require a lot of money. It doesn't require you to break your bank account or if you're saying, I don't have a good job, I'm looking for a job, how can I go out and spend money on clothes that I can't afford? Well, I'm sure that what it requires is, first of all, your decision. Second of all, it requires time. It requires your sacrifice. It requires you to dedicate time to fixing that closet that is all upside down. And it takes some tips to keep in mind. It requires you to educate yourself. Educate yourself about clothes, about fashion, about good quality items, about your body uh, type about colors, what's good for your skin tone and what isn't. So it requires effort, but nothing worthwhile is without effort. Everything that is worthwhile in life requires time and effort. And it's our responsibility whether we want to give it that time and that effort. So some general tips. Like I said, we should dress for the future, not for your present but for where you want to be. So you start by doing that. Being true to yourself, finding out what you want. And then we have some rules. Okay, let's talk about what is appropriate at the workplace. Your, the length of your skirt for us women is fundamental. Some things are best left for your night on the town, for going out to have a glass of wine with your girlfriends, for going dancing. Those outfits that are appropriate for those circumstances obviously are not appropriate for the workplace. So think about dressing for daytime. I find that very important. Many times people think that if you dress yourself up, if you get uh, with a lot of bling bling, with a lot of glowing things, that you're going to look better. And you might if you're going out on the town. But if you're going to work, you won't. So keep the length of your strength, of your skirt, <laughs> that's your strength, the length of your skirt adequate, not too short, so that you sit down at that meeting and people are looking at other things instead of looking at you. It is you that should be making the statement, not your clothes. If people remember what you were wearing when you leave that meeting, that means that they weren't paying attention to you. You don't want your clothes to be the what people remember. You want them to remember your brain what you had to offer to that conversation, what, how professional you are, what you contributed to that discussion. That's what's important if we want to be empowered and if we want to be professionally successful. So that's important to remember. 
Another thing that I would recommend is also about your tops, no see-throughs, no showing cleavage, not low cuts, no tra transparencies. That's best left off the workplace. Great for parties, not for the workplace. Of course, everything has to be considered. Your profession has a lot to do with it. Bankers are aware, and lawyers, and accountants, that they have a set certain standards. Of course, if somebody is in the entertainment industry, they're going to have some other parameters. So obviously, they're going to be more into the fashion, more trendy, more uh, bright colors. But for instance, I see Maria and I came dressed alike when she arrived today. You see, black and white, a printed dress, but in black and white. You could top it as we have today with a black jacket, but you could wear a fuchsia. I love the color of your dress. It's absolutely stunning. Yes, but if you put this shift with a jacket that color and you accessorize it with those colors, you have a totally different outfit. And this is where I go to say that you don't have to spend a lot of money. What you have to do is be very neat. It doesn't matter how expensive the clothes you're wearing is, if it's unkempt, if the uh, seams are not uh, well sewn, if you have a stain. So you have to take care of how neat you are. That also goes with your hands, your nails are very important, and your hair. If you want to project a professional image, you always, always, always have to be very, very neat and take care that your image looks like what you want to portray. Another thing that we want to talk about is your shoes. Your shoes and your handbags should be the best quality that you can afford. But besides being the best quality that you can afford, they have to be on the conservative side, depending on the industry that you work for, and also colors that are traditional and that you can wear in a lot of situations. So you do not have to have lots of shoes, but you have to have good quality shoes that you can mix and match with all your outfits. Medium sized heels, we recommend that for work uh, time, you wear closed toed shoes. Again, I'd say that of course you have to take into consideration what profession you're in. But as we go the entire pendulum, shoes that are appropriate for a banker will of course not be appropriate for an interior decorator, which we have here, a fashion oriented. So it depends what profession you're in. So it's our job to do some research about our peers. Where is it that I want to be in five years? Do I want to be the vice president of a bank? Or do I want to be the owner of my design studio? Obviously, your aims are totally different. And you are going to project that. But in general terms, be neat, buy good quality. I recommend always buying structured or well tailored clothes because you look more professional because you're going to look more structured well tailored more professional and that's going the image that you're going to project uh, we talked about transparencies and also i want to make sure that you remember also to the not too much rule it applies to jewelry less is more so keep it down. You're not, uh, you don't have to wear the dangling earrings to the office. But if you're going out at night, you put them in your bag, and before leaving the office, you go to the bathroom, you change accessories, and you just flared up your outfit. But you don't have to be wearing them all day, because in the office context, you don't look professional. So that's a tip that I always tell them. Take a colorful silk scarf. Put it around your neck when you're going out in the evening if you're going to an event immediately after work. 
but it doesn't mean that you have to show up at the office at 8 in the morning looking like you're going dancing. You're going dancing after work, not during work, and make sure that it looks that way. Okay? And then last but not least, remember that elegance is forever, and fashion trends are short-lived. So try and look professional by keeping it down and being as conservative in your dress and as elegant as you aim to project. Thank you very much.